I'll give you a, an automotive example. I used to own a 1937 MGSA, which was a special interest car. It was a the biggest car that, you know, MG was always known for little sports cars, but actually in the 30s, they built some huge cars that were the size of a Bentley or a Rolls-Royce and frankly stole a little bit of Rolls-Royce styling. But what this car had was four hydraulic jacks, uh, one at each corner of the car, so that when the car was parked, you could flip a switch and uh, you could electrically power these hydraulic jacks and the whole car would majestically lift off of all four wheels. Now, okay, it's, it's impressive technology and it was obviously marketed and it was hailed as a true breakthrough, but when you ask yourself, where is the customer value in that? Today, a system like that would cost hundreds of dollars. Back then it was probably 10 pounds. Uh, and it was an interesting feature, but it, it sort of assumed that you had flat tires all the time or that you constantly had to rotate the tires. But in terms of usefulness, I'll bet you that 95%, in 95% of those cars, that feature was never used, or if it was used, it was a guy demonstrating it to his friend and showing what a cool feature his new car had. Uh, but when I had the car, I, I want, tried to see if the system worked. It didn't work because everything was kind of frozen in place. I decided, not to rehab that particular feature. Um, and when you look at it, that is, it's innovative, it's cute, it's something you can demonstrate, has zero customer value, and there, uh, there obviously is an automotive innovation that didn't withstand the test of time because it simply didn't add value. In today's automotive world, you see a lot of that stuff too. Uh, if you look at a lot of the high technology interface between the driver and the car. You've got these touchscreen displays that require multiple steps, you know, like, like scrolling through a menu to do something that you can do mechanically in one single movement. So going through the touchscreen from menu to climate control, to blower speed, to increase, is just not an improvement over looking at the round knob that's got a picture of a fan on it and you click it from two to three, uh, which is just far more efficient. So once again, it may be cool. The, the thinking among the product planners is always the kids will love it because the kids are used to scrolling through computer menus. But this really presupposes that kids are stupid and uh, don't like doing things the easy way like the real like the rest of us do so uh, my point is when you argue you have to have a point and when you innovate you have to add value those are the only innovations worthwhile because those are the ones that in the end people are going to be willing to pay for innovations that truly add value uh, my my poster child example is apple you'll remember the apple ipod a true breakthrough, it did something that hadn't been done before. The iPhone, again, functionality and appeal that had never been that, that had never been presented to the public before. The iPad, once again, a breakthrough innovation that did something that hadn't been done before and did it brilliantly. So that's what you should be thinking about and uh, about if and when you take the next steps with the ideas and inventions that you develop in this program. Not only is it a great idea that offers an, an innovative energy solution, but can you make a business case out of it? When you can, when it is innovative and adds real value and you can charge for it, and it, 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 there is a business case and some profitability at the end, then you've got a real solution on your hands. 